All right, guys, welcome. It's uh, June 9th here. We're trying to do another financial model. This is um, a tool to help with inventory restocking, cash flow planning. It's got some really complex logic in it, but super beneficial and super uh, user friendly. So uh, I just, <laughs> I'll just tell you right now, I just did this whole video and I accidentally had my microphone on mute. So I'm redoing it right now from scratch. Uh, make sure my microphone is now unmuted, which it is. Okay, so this was daunting. I, I thought about doing it last night, and I know there's so many complexities, uh, especially with a lead time uh, dynamic variable, but I was able to figure it out, and it all works, and it's really, really cool, and I'm excited about it. Uh, just before I get started here, note that you can buy the model. It'll be a one-time fee of $45. The link to the purchase will be in the description box below. And you can go to smarthelping.com. If you want to go directly to the site to buy it, it will be in the financial models tab. It'll probably be at the top for at least the next you know, couple months. Well, probably the next six months will be on the first uh, page. As I do these about once every uh, month or so, or maybe two a month. Okay. Let's get into it. So we first, uh, I'm just going to go through each tab and show you how the logic works, and we'll go from there. So first tab is the control tab. This is where you're going to enter. Everything in light yellow is um, editable or adjustable. And I built it for 19 possible SKUs. You should note that you can, if you have more than that, you can try to bundle SKUs into an average and just put it into one row. Uh, or, you know, you can expand this. Uh, it would take some time, but it'd just be a matter of dragging and dropping the formulas and moving the, the formulas around. But you could probably use this as far as Excel's capabilities. Um, I'd say somewhere between 500 and 1,000 SKUs would probably be the limit before, because there's a lot of logic and formula work going on. It might start to slow down after that, but, you know, who knows what the actual limit might be. And it depends on your computer's processing power as well. Okay, so you write down your SKU names here. It'll populate throughout the model. You put in your average cost, your average price, your sale price, um, and the lead time. Uh, so let's get into the lead time. This is the most complex variable. And this is telling the model that um, if you order a given item or unit, how long will it take for those units to actually get into the inventory? The reason why it has to be dynamic and different is because normally your cash flow, you're going to cash is going to go out when you buy it. And it's going, the inventory is going to take some time to get in. And that's, you know, you need to plan for those scenarios and see how it affects cash flow and your, based on your projected sales, um, what your inventory looks like. So let's look at average. Uh, Actually, let's go. So let's start with um, some basics after you get off of this assumptions tab. You're going to have to populate your forecasted sales of each SKU. So what this model will show you, will allow you to do is you can put in the past three years worth of sales for each SKU by month. Based on that, this uh, formula will calculate your average sales count in a given month. So it's going to show seasonality. If you have more sales in, you know, January, February time of the year, it's going to show up here. Or if it's more in September, October. Um, so that's, this historical data is manually input by you. Uh, it can be downloaded from a software and put in here. There's all kinds of different ways, but it has to get into this, uh, these, this structure to flow. Um, so after you go there, uh, You'll see this forecast auto updates, and this is going to show you your average uh, expected sales count historically, and then based on what percentage you think is going to be different from your historical average. So this actually could be negative two, and you can see it turns red if you put negative, and it affects the actual sales count forecast in blue here. So all this is doing is showing you, okay, here's what was my average historical was for the, each month. Here's what I think it'll change by in the next 12 months. And then based on that, here's the actual amount of sales I expect for each SKU. That's all that's going on here. Um, 
so okay so we got lead time we got a starting balance of inventory so let's focus here on this so what how does lead time work so let's say we've got SKU one we've got lead time of 15 days starting inventory here is 10 um, we expect about 227 uh, units to be sold a month based on uh, if we want to order th for three months worth of that we have to order 681 units each time we have to reorder so look at this logic this inventory level stuff is this these formulas are intense this is the hardest part um, I had and it's not like the formulas are hard it's just using some index match and some ifs but the way the formulas are structured with the counts and the V lookups it was really difficult to figure out what would make sense without having circular logic and, and make it all flow so we got it to work um, and you can see here we've got SKU 1 it starts with a balance of 10 now since um, this formula simply checks if the running balance is negative, if it is negative, then this auto populates to the amount of the reorder. If it's not negative, then it just reduces the previous month's balance by the expected amount of sales for that month divided by the amount of days in the month, because this is actually a daily schedule. Um, now it counts the amount of days perfectly, so based on what month it is, it's going to change the amount of days. Um, and that's also good for short months and it really provides pre precision. So you can see here every month we're going down in this inventory for SKU because we're obviously making sales and we're not reordering you know, every day. So you can see this drops down. Now here's the cool part. Drops down, drops down. Now look at this. We get to five and then the next day we need we have to reorder or else we're going to be negative so we need to order 681 now here's the thing this says based on our inventory levels we're going to run out here so we have to have 681 coming in on february so if that's going to happen we need to order 681 uh 15 days prior so look at that 15 is there so this is going to go and it says right here We go to skew. What skew am I on? If we go to skew one, 15 day lead time. So this 681 should be ordered 15 days prior, which there it is. 15 days prior, which would be day 39. And the logic here is, is kind of is complex. I don't want to get into it, but you can look at the formula and figure it out. Nothing's blocked or hidden when you uh, purchase a template. I, I mean, high level is just looking at the day and checking to see if, if that day matches the day that you have to purchase. If so, if this day matches that day plus the lead time, then it pops in there. And that's kind of how, that's the only way I could figure out how to make it dynamic so that the units come in based on the lead time. Now watch this. So this is an easy way to see. So this was uh, day 15 lead time. What if I put in here 16 days? Well, that should go back one day. And you see there it did. Now it's on day 38. Let's say I put in 17 days. So I got to order it one day earlier than that. Well, now it's day 37 is coming. It's being ordered. So that's how all of these work all dynamically. It's pretty awesome. Uh. And so based on all of that logic, we get a nice summary report here. Let me expand all of these out. And this shows you the forecasted revenue based on your planned sales and then your forecasted purchases of inventory based on um, the lead times. So these are this shows, you know, so here we've got our monthly reorder counts. Um, this is based on when you're reordering it, not when the inventory is getting there. So this is what's directly flowing to the amount of cash you need. Um, there's the cost. Then we have, have our monthly sales based on our sales forecast for each unit. Those sales dollars for each unit, which is what flows up into here. And this top line sales number. And then uh, the net inventory change. And then here's a really important tab. This shows your basically your buffer of how much 
what where your inventory levels are at for each SKU based on the projected sales, the projected purchases of new inventory, and your starting balance. So you can see here, most of these are going down, and that's because the sales are increasing as you go forward in time. Now that's just because of how I built the uh, assumptions. Now that will be different based on whatever your historical sales counts are um, over time and what your forecast levels are. Um, but it's really nice. This is probably the most important table here um, because you could see what months you're, you know you're getting low, what months you should be planning on having to make more purchases, and if you if you probably should increase your the amount you're purchasing um like if you have some decent negatives here this is saying that you're actually going to run out of inventory if assuming everything happens as planned um and then down here we've got when inventory is actually arriving so this is when it gets there based on when you're actually ordering it up here. So this order, this 681 is ordered and it's getting there because there's a lead time of 17 days. It can't, it's possible that it gets there in the same month it's ordered, but with for overlapping months in longer lead times, let's say we put this lead time at like 45 days, you can see how that affects it. It'll arrive here, but now look, it'll be purchased. Um, the purchase is coming at a much different time. So this purchase is actually, the 681 purchase here is actually going to be this arrival time. Because there's that difference in when you buy it when it gets there now the earlier ones are here because you're actually going negative right at the start so it's assuming that you're purchasing that prior to the actual forecast starting so it's assuming you've already paid that out that money out but you're actually getting the, the inventory in then uh let's see here Trying to see if there's anything else I need to go over. Oh, yeah. So one reason you really want uh, this could be helpful is if you have your other a regular financial model with your cash flow and you need to dynamically populate your inventory purchases and you want to be able to adjust, you know, these types of assumptions to see how your per, your cash flow is going to be affected. Well, this can easily be tied in, and you it, it, to get this kind of functionality, you need all of this logic to work. So it's kind of hard to actually build that into a model you're already building. Well, here you can do it here, and then you could feed this row of uh, purchases right into your other model, and there's your inventory cash flow. And that's better than just having like a strict, you know, okay, we're gonna buy inventory every two months or three months, and of this. You know, this is really dynamic, a, a skew by skew basis, and is, is super um, powerful in the functionality that is available at the, based on how this works. Okay. Um, what else? This is just the general thing to say, you know, when you do make a re reorder, do you, how many months do you want it to be for? And then you can also break these formulas if you want. Let's say um, I actually want to reorder 500 here for SKU 18, rather than just for one month, uh, one month's worth. If you go over here to SKU 18, now you can see dynamically change to 500, and you can see how that impacts the running balance there. Uh, let's go to a negative one. So let's say, you know, skew 15, we actually get negative 
so we want more of a buffer. So let's go ahead and do SKU 15. Let's say we want to actually do 450 on our purchases. Well, now you can see no negative. Wait, which one was that? SKU 15. Yeah, so now you can see you withstand the impact of your future forecasted sales. Now this is obviously dependent on your sales being close to what you actually forecast and then you ordering what you think you're going to order uh, in the amounts. Obviously if the sales change and your reorder rate is uh, you know fixed at whatever your monthly average is, um, that's why it's not a perfect you know match of buying exactly the amount of inventory you need but it's never going to be because you're for you're never going to be exactly what you forecast but this is trying to give you a general idea of what buffers you might have if certain things happen in certain ways at certain times okay so that's i think that's all i got uh is there anything else here oh this shows an overview so you can see how um like the total co cash for a given SKU you spending changes per year based on these assumptions uh, total units order per year and total times you're actually making a reorder for each SKU uh, and those all change dynamically note that you're actually changing these cells in green here and that's it everything else is dynamic on this forecast you're just doing the percentage changes and uh, sales forecast totals I guess that's it that's all the logic um, really excited to get this out there because basically any business that has inventory needs to plan their cash flow for inventory purchasing throughout the year could benefit from this and it's you know $45 is nothing for um, this type of logic and knowledge so uh, have fun with it and I'll see you on the next model this is smarthelping.com